First of all, Glenn, I know you don't get home nearly as probably as much as you would like to. Um, for the chance to just do this for the first time in, in, in a couple of decades, what's it mean to you to kind of see some of the same folks who were there at the outset of the beginning of this career? Well, it's, it's great. Uh, you know, I've actually never been in the Admiral Coons Army before, which is where we're at tonight in Hannibal, Missouri. Um, but always wrestled at the uh, the other National Guard Army here in town. Um, but, you know, my friend Mark Morton uh, is uh, – let me start that all over. I messed sure. that all no, over. Sure, no, you're fine. It's great. My buddy Mark Morton is uh, uh, one of the uh, people behind tonight's event, and he's a very good friend of mine. And uh, you know, anytime I have the opportunity to, to do something to him, it's wonderful. And then you know, to be back here in Hannibal. I haven't been back in, in years now because WWE, of course, we, we go to, to St. Louis and Kansas City, Springfield, Illinois, but that was about as close as we ever got to up here. So it's just great to come back and see all that's changed and you know, some things that haven't changed as well. You, you touched on Mark. He was there from the outset. I mean, he's pretty instrumental in a lot of this and those, those critical first steps you took in the wrestling side of your career. Yeah, sure was. I mean, we virtually started together. In fact, you can almost say he's the guy that got me into wrestling because I remember we were watching TV at his house and uh, it was WWE and Mark said half-jokingly something about, you know, we should try that. And we did, and uh, you know, it, uh, for me it turned out really well. And that would have never happened if I'd never been sitting there watching WWE at, at Mark's house in Louisiana, Missouri. From your standpoint, you've had a lot of outlier success in a number of different fields where it's really hard to swim upstream, wrestling, politics. What is it about your Northeast Missouri background that kind of allowed you to dream beyond the normal dream and to kind of push that forward? I'm stubborn, like Missouri Mule, I think is what it is. <laughs> when I get my mind set on something, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, that's what I try to do. Um, you know, I live in Tennessee now, and uh, it, it's funny because you travel around the world, you travel uh, even around the country, and um, you find folks that are just really nice and hospitable. And Tennessee folks are wonderful. That's part of the reason that I live there is people are just so nice. And it's the same growing up here. Uh, you know, I, I think that we have uh, in here in Northeast Missouri, it's a great community. Um, people have good values. Uh, work ethic is something that is uh, encouraged and promoted. And hard work will take you a long way in life. And I think that's, it's just that, you know, the fact that um, as I was growing up, you know, I saw people that worked hard and, um, not only that, but went out and, and helped their neighbor. And I think all those things are really important. When I, when I hear you uh, in your job as mayor, when I hear you talk on political talk shows an, uh, an awful lot, I hear you say words like opportunity creation and mm. maximizing opportunities. And that sounds smack dab like a North, Northeast Missouri kid right from the get-go. How much has that shaped your politics as well? Oh, huge, huge. Um, I grew up right outside Frankfurt, right? Uh, so I tell people who aren't familiar with our area, you know, I grew up, outside of a town with 300 people, right? About five miles outside of that town. Um, you know, so it's literally, it's literally the middle of nowhere. I think we could all agree on that. Um, and a lot of times you'd think, well, what, what would the opportunities for this young person be in life? You know, in, in Tennessee, we call it the holler, right? Um, what would the opportunities be? And the thing is that uh, I did have tremendous opportunities, and I took advantage of them. You know, I worked hard, but it is. It's about the opportunities, and I think after traveling the world, that's what separates America from everywhere else around the world is the fact that you do have, opp have opportunities. You know, someone like me, being born to the parents that I was, you know, in the situation that they were in, you know, all of those things, you know, if I had been born someplace else, my life would have turned out completely differently. All of us would have been like that, right? But here in America, you have the opportunity to pretty much do whatever you want with your life. And I think that's something that we take for granted. And I think that that's the most important thing that we have. I mean, that, to me, that's the essence of the American dream. And the reason I got into politics was to try to protect and preserve that for the next generation. Glenn, I'm fascinated by this, and I've wondered about this for years. Your wife, your daughters, your coworkers, uh, the folks at City Hall, 
do any of them realize what a great basketball player you were at Truman <laughs> State University? Is there like a municipal pickup game that you were like my, kind of my, my, my career field goal percentage record just was broken a couple of years ago or last year, I think, right? So uh, I, I don't know if anyone does does realize that, actually. And I haven't picked up a basketball in – in months now um i don't play like i used to uh but now i I don't think anyone you know anyone realize everybody knows the wrestling stuff they don't realize hey i played football and basketball too right and i was pretty decent i was a college athlete okay come on (laughs) but that competitive nature i mean how much of that and, and i know it's hard to walk away from basketball when it was and you touched on it with football at bowling green and all of that how much did wrestling kind of fill that competitive Oh, all of it, man. It? All of it, yeah, because ever since I was a little kid, I mean, I grew up watching the Cardinals just like everybody else around here, right? You know, that's all I wanted to be is I wanted to be a baseball Cardinal. Um, I just wasn't very good at baseball. Uh, I was awkward as a, as a child and, you know, all that stuff. Um, but then I got into basketball, and because of my height, I was just naturally gifted at basketball and, then, and football even more so. Um, and that's all I ever wanted to do ever since I was a kid, man. You know, and that's – I had to find something. And that, that is where wrestling came in, you know, is the fact that it gave me the ability to continue my athletic career in a slightly different way. But nevertheless, it gave me the ability to do that. And if it hadn't done that, I mean, you know, I, I don't know. Because that's, again, ever since I was a little kid, that's all I ever saw myself doing is playing sports. And – um Ever since I was, I can remember I wanted to be a professional athlete. And that's the thing about life is your dreams can come true, and they do come true often, just a little bit different than you think. And that's what happened with me. I mean, I'm a professional athlete just in a different way than I envisioned when I was younger. But it it certainly filled that void in a huge way. I I promised only one smarky wrestling question, but I'm going to ask it because – you know, you do try on a number of different guises and personas before you get to the Kane character. And it's kind of a zeitgeist thing. How quickly did you know that that was it? I mean, that this was different than, than all of the other characters and personas that you tried on. And did you realize that this would become such a huge part of your life <laughs> for the rest of your life? I knew from the beginning, like from the very beginning, that this was different because um, I just knew that I could do it. The other characters i was still i was still learning and it, granted as kane i had a lot to learn as well but um i knew that i could make that successful and then i had the wwe behind it and i had the undertaker behind it so i knew that that was going to be successful and the first night you go out and you have that debut and all of that i mean you know you just know that that's going to be um awesome for how long is a very different question uh and if you'd asked me that i would have been able to keep on doing this for going on a quarter of a century, I would have said, no way, that's, that's not going to happen. I mean, if I'd have had four or five years, I'd have probably been like, ah, that's probably, you know, it's probably going to be about it. Um, but I've been very fortunate and very blessed that it has carried on this long. Um, and I've reinvented myself a number of times. WWE has, has always just um, given me tremendous opportunities, and I've had great people to work with. So, I mean, if anybody had... Uh, you know, if anybody ever had a great opportunity that, that they could take advantage of, it was certainly me. Last one for you. You've talked about reinvention, and you've obviously reinvented yourself very successfully in Knox County. Uh, did the Vols win today? I didn't even see. Uh, the Vols did well. Yeah, they were up 20 to 10 okay. with under a minute left in the fourth quarter last I checked. So, yes. Uh, so, you've reinvented yourself so well. Have you thought about maybe what the next evolution of Glenn Jacobs is? <laughs> I know that a lot of people, there are people in this country where you've kind of tapped into a political vein that kind of where everything's extremist in this day and age. You kind of have your own unique vibe. Have you given any thought to what the future of politics may be well, beyond that? Well, um, the country is very divided, and that's unfortunate. Uh, it's unfortunate because um, we are, we're all going to have our opinions, but now uh, we can't even talk to each other about them at least without not being called names and, you know, and everything else. And I don't know what happens with that. Um, You know, in the end, at some point we need, you know, we need someone that can unify and bring us together and remind us that we have more in common than we don't and start with what we have in common uh, and on other things maybe agree to disagree. that's probably not going to happen in the near future because, unfortunately, both parties, they're, you know, b- both parties are, have a vested interest in keeping us um, divided. 
So, uh, you know, and, and I talk a lot about liberty and freedom. I think those things are really important. I think that's the most important thing that this country has. Um, so I, I don't know what the future for me holds, uh, you know, and I haven't, I mean, you know, I haven't given a whole lot of thought to that. I think with, with my own life, generally what happens is I see an opportunity and uh, I go for it. But I, you know, peop- I know people that have their life planned out all the way, right? And it's like Mike Tyson says, it's great to have a plan, but it goes out the window and you get punched in the face. And life has this, ch- it has this thing about punching you in the face with stuff. Um, you know, so I don't, I don't know what that holds. Uh, I just want to do a good job where I'm at and do the best I can and uh, in whatever little way I can in East Tennessee have a positive impact on that region.